Okay, I want to hear Duncan Trussell shit on Joe. And I and you like you are one of the most progressive people I've ever met. And so when you when people start falling upon you uh, because you have like nerds like Ben Shapiro, <laughs> uh, which by the way you shouldn't have that guy on anymore. Why? Like, he's a dork. Come well, on. Come on. Those conversations are important. I it, think what's beautiful about what. Oh my God, dude! Look at his face. Come well, on, come on. Those. Con oh my God, he's zooted, dude. He's just gone, dude. I've never. This is like this is outside of the planet high, dude. This is like this is like weed is tight high, which I I don't really see Joe Rogan this high because he's an experienced pot smoker. But goddamn. Or drunk. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I would not open up the... Pl the by the way, Ben Shapiro, underneath it all, I know that you and I would probably have fun. But I know that right now where you're at in your incarnation, you're a dork. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's a dork. I love that. This is the most effective way to dismantle people like Ben Shabibo for someone like Joe Rogan and Joe Rogan's audience. It's not about, like, well, logically speaking, here's why you're wrong, wrong, wrong. Like, that's one way to do it, but you're not going to reach, like, all of the... BJJ morons who like follow everyone that Joe Rogan uh, converses with uh, and, and get indoctrinated into the cult of Ben Shabibo. Just say he's a dork. The annoying debate lords who fancy themselves uh, intellectuals or actually pseudo intellectuals will say that's an ad hominem. But that is a tiny fraction of the, uh, the, the, the Joe Rogan fan base. A much larger fraction of the Joe Rogan fan base are eight brained dipshits like myself who used to love Joe Rogan or still love Joe Rogan because they're eight brained dipshits. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that as long as you are an eight brained dipshit with a kind heart who wants to do the right thing. But remember, those people represent the majority in the bro Rogan fan base. And the best way to effectively dismantle someone like Ben Shabibo is just to be like, you're a dork. You're unfunny. You're boring. You're not owning anybody. You're just like, your life is boring and you're a dork you look at him and you're like he's all like beating up what's her face about the thing and that embarrassing thing what? the 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 music video he's like and they oh, were doing fornication <laughs> did you see me and ali mikovsky talking about wet ass pussy oh god <laughs> it, like see that's great that's so good that's the cool kid railing on the f you got to think about this in the high school terms duncan trussell cool kid joe rogan has a lot of respect for him and, and also he's he's great overall when he dunks on f Ben Shabibo and like, I guess, metaphorically pants Ben Shabibo, Joe Rogan's ape brain kicks in and is literally like, yeah, you're kind of right. Oh, uh, yeah, he is kind of a dork. He, he's, he's kind of a clown. You're right. Like, he, <laughs> like that thing Shapiro's do. It's so embarrassing, Joe. And I like that dude is like an embarrassment. But the, what I, I don't think what people admit when they look at Ben Shapiro it's like there's a piece of you that's like, I'd, I'd have fun with him. Like, it'd be fun to drink with him. He's probably cool. But he's like right now. I, I don't think he drinks, but he's a nice guy. He's a, what, whatever it is. He's he a is. good person. I'm not bullshitting. That's, a, that's why I know you're doing it, Joe. He's an, I'm telling you right now, Ben Shapiro is a nice man. He's a nice man. I see him. I hug. He's him. a nice man who's just, you know, like pretty homophobic and tries to mask it with like logic and reason. Dude, he's not a nice man at all. Ben Shapiro's entire existence is literally about trying to five head logically define his incredibly conservative point of view that most people who follow him would not be able to describe civilly. And he even fails to do that. Like he's constantly trying to five head his way into just being able to get away with saying really horrifically racist shit. That's it. He's a nice guy. Look, I think some of the stuff he's propagating in his like philosophies are, is like legitimately deranged. Bro, he's wearing an outfit. It's a costume. He's got. I mean, he. Ben Shapiro. <laughs> ah, he's so zooted. What? What is this? <laughs> oh, he's so dumb, dude. How can you not love Joe Rogan, dude? How can you not love this f ape, dude? I mean, I can get it. If you're trans, I understand why you would not love Joe Rogan because he has perpetrated a fuckload of transphobia and normalized it to a degree that, like, even when I mention it, his fan base will f light up. But outside of that, god damn, he's such a f goon, dude. 
he literally just reminds me of all of my fucking close friends from a time before I I was so woke. He's such a fucking ape. Tell me he's not a more manly Ben Shibino. No, 100% no. Ben Shibibo is purposefully and deliberately trying to justify cultural conservatism. He is a political grifter that very deliberately is doing conservative agiprop, racist agiprop, trying to logic, uh, trying to fucking get stem lords into believing uh, really weird, horrible conservative opinions, right? Conservative points of view. Joe Rogan, on the other hand, is a self-admitted ape who doesn't know any better and absolutely as a consequence of his ape brain gets caught up with pseudo-intellectual rhetoric all the time. He is so susceptible to uh, getting indoctrinated into whatever mentality by people like Sam Harris, especially if it's paired up with the cultural hegemony that Joe Rogan has been socially conditioned into believing, whether it be transphobia, light white supremacy, light white supremacy, uh, Islamophobia, things like that. When it's delivered to Joe Rogan in a pseudo intellectual package, he's like, yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you smart guy. You say things I kind of low key believe. Wow, you must be brave to be able to say this. And then he agrees with them because he thinks that they are smarter than he is when they're not. A lot of times they're not, but such is the nature of Joe Rogan. But deep down inside, if you have listened to him as long as I have, you know that on a lot of issues, especially when it comes to uh, oppression under capitalism even, or when it comes to uh, pe like people of color from worse off conditions, like the, the, the concept of like equality of opportunity being false in America. These are the types of things that Joe Rogan consistently talks about and consistently defends against people like Dave Rubin, maybe not so much against people like Ben Shapiro because he's afraid that Ben Shapiro will like own him, but he, he is a man of contradictions, many contradictions, but such is the nature of a lot of people that involve themselves with American politics. I'm telling you, we all come from a different spot. We, if, if life is a race, it's not like everybody's on the same starting line. Like, people are on starting lines that are like a mile behind yeah. yours. They're so far away. They're all different. Right on the money, he starts talking about how equality, the, the falsehood of equality of opportunity, right as I said that. Friend, even if you disagree with the way people feel about so many different things, yeah. it doesn't mean you can't be their friend. It doesn't. And uh, I'm telling you, we got it wrong, That's so man. sweet. Here's it's hard. It's hard to, to counter this take. It's so f hard to counter this take, especially if you're not going to slam dunk on Joe uh, in a debate lord way and be like, can you be friends with Nazis then? And then the, the counter from Joe would be, oh, well, Ben Shapiro's not a Nazi. I don't think he's bullshitting. I just think he's like a little like antiquated in his idea. <laughs> Look, man, I, I, I like I'm not like the whole Ben Shapiro thing. I like that's of all your guests. It's the he's one a great guy, man. If you met him, if you and I and him went to a steak dinner, we'd have a great conversation. Yeah, because Ben Shibibo knows how to conduct himself in certain circles. The entire, like, nearing the mask off moment in Ben Shapiro's rhetoric, the entire rhetoric of Ben Shapiro revolves around being able to say really horrific shit while still maintaining your presence at liberal cocktail parties inside of Hollywood circles. That's where Ben Shibibo thrives. That's how he has become so successful. He literally knows how to f maneuver around these, uh, uh, maneuver around the Overton window shifting as social progressivism or social progress becomes the norm, like writing about really horribly outdated homophobic things when it was acceptable to be that homophobic and then shifting that rhetoric around to just be like, well, I was always a constitutionalist because I, I don't think the government should be involved in anybody's marriage, blah, blah, blah. Like I'm a, I'm a libertarian while still saying, well, because I'm an Orthodox Jew, it's like, uh, impossible for me to believe that you can be homosexual and also be an Orthodox Jew at the same time. If you're a homosexual Orthodox Jew, then what you must do is marry a woman. He said those things on the Joe Rogan podcast. He's very good at using liberal terminology and, and liberals pro proclivity or uh, liberals interest towards civility against them to subtly throw really conservative and oftentimes really horrific, racist, bigoted opinions around while simultaneously justifying it with logic and reason. I Look, f as far as I'm concerned, if you're gonna create what I think could be created by humanity, 
we have to create the engine not of rejection but of acceptance which meaning that like if you got a charismatic Finn Shapiro avatar in the video game of, in the simulation that we're in there's a way to reabsorb him into reality that isn't like the way people currently see him if he's willing to relinquish his ideology yeah and like, he has a very strict religious ideology yeah he's stuck in it's this like, little thing that's an excuse an excuse that Joe Rogan would never, ever in a million years allow a Muslim person to have, and he shouldn't. I'll take it one step further. What do I always say? Defending people's right to believe in whatever the fuck they want to when it comes to religion and their religious practices is one thing. As long as their religious practices are, don't justify them having bigoted fucking opinions. I say this about Islam, I say this about Christianity, and I will certainly say it about Orthodox Judaism or Judaism in general as well. And Joel Rogan, because of his Judeo-Christian uh, background, I guess, or like being a part of American society, never sees that in a similar capacity when it comes to someone as educated as Ben Shabibo, who has lived in a place like California his entire life. Ben Shabibo has no excuse. If you were to turn around and be like, motherfucking Dagestan's very own Khabib Nurmagomedov and his takes, yeah, of course, that's a little bit more understandable if that dude is bigoted. He's a goddamn fighter for fuck's sake from Dagestan. He literally grew up herding goats. You're really going to compare that to California's very own product, Ben Shapibo, whose father is like a classically trained musician? If that's the stretch that you're going to go to to justify Ben Shapibo's really horrific bigoted backwards ass takes because he's an orthodox jew so i guess it's acceptable then i don't know what to tell you at that point man like how are these two things the same it shouldn't be an excuse and you can 100 percent have a conversation with someone from dagestan and be like dude that's not cool that you're saying that but the conversation that you're having with someone like that is entirely different because that person is truly a manifestation of their social conditioning and their material conditions and their culture educating them in the way that they have that person has somewhat of an out it's still unacceptable especially if they're using that to to justify really horrible positions that they might have really bigoted positions but ben shapiro does not have that out as someone who grew up in mother california in these very liberal circles and is doing it as a grift it like smacks of like the Nazi intellectuals. Yes, it does. Know? But he's Jewish, and here's the thing uh, I love when people such a get one head take from Joe. Of course, out of me that I talk to him. I'm like, listen, just listen to what we're saying. Listen, he's not a bad guy. He might not agree with him, but me and him are having really, really good conversations yeah. about wh why I feel like you can't tell an 18 year old kid just pull your pants up and don't shoot anybody. Yeah. We're, we're having these like really nuanced conversations and he's allowing me because he knows I like him. So you're like the Bohemian Grove. But it's not. I told you, it's because he's fearful of Ben. He thinks Ben Shapiro is like a brilliant mind and he gets caught up in Ben's rhetoric. And that's why he like is like, he's allowing me to say these things. Yeah, he's a useful idiot to someone like Ben Shapiro who 100% is utilizing Joe's much larger platform to spread his horrific f uh, point of view by maintaining their relationship. If Joe was disposable to Ben, he would, in a heartbeat, drop him. That's just the f truth. That's the problem we're all facing. We're all facing this problem where we identify with ideas. Whereas... Yeah, what we should be doing actually is like hugging and kissing uh, people who radicalize others into... Uh, committing acts of white supremacist terror. That's what we should be doing, actually. Um, we should be hugging and kissing the rampant Islamophobes in our communities, the rampant homophobes in our communities. Black people, why don't you just hug some white supremacists? Like, God damn it, dude. The civil rights movement, like, it, it could have happened so so much earlier if black people should have just, like, went up and, and, and hugged white people. This is where that, this is unfortunately, and I know this is a trigger word for a lot of people, but that, that is a f place of privilege. Like, to be able to say that straight the fuck up comes from a point of privilege because you don't understand. And if you thought about it for, like, if I didn't use the word privilege and instead I made you question that for a brief moment, made you, like, really reconsider it, you would definitely understand. You're like, what the fuck? What are you expecting black people to go out and, like, hug and kiss people that don't think that they're human beings and want to do them harm? You'd be like, oh, yeah, that's, that's right. That's... 
kind of a dumb take. I mean, I guess you got to like be a little bit gentler in the way that you deal with it because we're all a product of our social conditioning. It's like, sure, there is certainly a way to do it more civilly, but I don't think expecting that, uh, expecting the oppressed to be friendly with their oppressors is, is silly. He's a nice guy. Look, man, it doesn't matter. Like, here's a deeper this point, man. I, and I don't mean Perfect. to do this every time I'm on. But, but you have such a, such a crazy power that if you're not careful, folks from deep, dark wells of perspective are going to infiltrate your shit. <sighs> Dude, have you watched that great documentary on uh, the, like, white Aryan folks, man? It's up like this Dude, why crazy. you gotta go there give me that lighter these people are very organized man it's like they're organized is what i'm saying and like i'm and again i'm not saying ben shapiro is this person he wears a yarmulke he's jewish what i don't know much about him i don't care listen, i don't all, care listen to me listen to me all those people that are organized they come hang out with us give me a hug you don't want to give them a hug relax why just relax all those people are just people man like a white supremacist they're lost they imagine if you gave a white supremacist five meo dmt and then ah! i'm sitting on a couch i'm losing my mind how can you be so he stupid dude they'd take three big hits and then as the first one as they're exhaling yeah yeah dude white supremacists never do drugs by the way yeah. They're not like notorious for cooking up and doing drugs and selling drugs or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. And they get sucked into the Bro, Joe's solution to everything is just doing DMT. You know how there's like a very small marginal element on the left that every like that destiny and other people try to dunk on by saying like socialism will abolish racism or whatever like joe rogan is that guy but for dmt oh dmt will destroy racism and they realize there is no center because there is no boundaries <laughs> it's all connected you're in a soup you're in yeah. an infinite soup of ideas and biology and thoughts and prayers and love and yeah. hope and happiness and jealousy right. and anal sex and it's all together yeah joe it's just weird because it's like you're like a but it's not me it's what they think i am it's who they decide i am yeah but you have to watch out because people are gonna like try to exploit you that's the main thing is like people recognizing what you are who have political agendas oh, dude, will Duncan infiltrate so your shit and then start blowing out their radioactivity into the world right that's a fear like you, you don't agree i know you don't agree with like ben shapiro Listen, it's not that I don't agree with Ben Shapiro, and I definitely don't on many things, and he and I talked about it. It's that I don't want to abandon him. Oh, that's, that's cool. I don't, I don't think he's worthy of abandonment because I think he's a good person. Right. And I think many of the things he's he not. says, he says because he's rewarded for saying controversial things on the internet and many times make sense in you know a logical way if you don't take into account all the different situations that lead to a person becoming who they are in 2020 right wait what slavery and gym so just racist he literally just admitted ben shapiro is only logical in a vacuum that is outside of the realm of existence where your socioeconomic conditions truly are impactful in the way that you develop so not logical and completely beyond the pale and not so nonsensical that it only exists in the space vacuum somewhere jesus christ dude the reason why joe knows dave rubin is a grifter is because dave rubin is not smart enough to present himself as not a grifter ben is smart enough to present himself as a logically consistent person even when he's not logically consistent that's the big difference Dave is so f stupid that Joe can recognize that stupidity and own him. Ben is a little bit smarter than Dave, so he can hide it. So for someone with a permanent ape brain like Joe, he's like, oh, well, you speak fast. Use big word. Smart man. I agree. Rational take if adjusted to a space vacuum in hypothetical you create, but still very good. Logical in that circumstance. So logical all around. But I think the problem is in ideal I ideologies. More than anything, as, uh, if I'm really being objective. Slavo Zizek voice, dude. Actually, you know what? Zizek would be f 
awesome on this show. Oh my God, I'm such an annoying. F what am I, the Red Scare podcast? What am I saying? The words that are coming out of my mouth right now disgust me. Oh, it's disgusting, but also could be entertaining. And I think if we could just divorce ourselves from ideas and divorce ourselves from all ideologies and just look at something like honest, like you come to me and I come to you and I go, hey man, what's up? I go, what are your intentions? My, my intention is to live a harmonious life with my neighbors. And I said, mine as well. Yeah. Okay, good, beautiful. And you hug each other and you go, what do we have to do about taxes? That's right. That's the problem. You believe in the idea of democracy. You just don't believe in the organizational facility that's like administering democracy. I've been to the red line of human beings. I know where people fall apart. I know the red line. Yeah. I know when the RPMs hit. Yeah. I know when people yeah. bitch out. And I know I'm not going to bitch out. And if you're gonna bitch out, I know, I know you're. If you're bitching out and you're also making, you're making laws, right? You, 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 what are you saying? What, what are you doing? What's yeah. going on? Who are you? Why are you deciding what people do? We shouldn't have any figureheads. That's it's right. It's dangerous. Yeah. Alpha chimps are dangerous. This Take it from me, a person. He's so dumb, dude with a big platform yeah you shouldn't listen to me you shouldn't listen to you you shouldn't listen to Burt Kreischer no. you shouldn't listen to Tom Segura or Ari Safir one ironically sounds like an anarchity who refuses to read and just says like oh I'm an anarchist he sounds like what Perfect. all the Marxist Leninists think every anarchist is like oh dude no abolish every hierarchy man every single one is dangerous there should be no leaders humanity should just magically exist dude Come on, think about it, dude. Primitive accumulation, dude. We lived for centuries without any sort of cohesive organizing unit, dude. But how weird is it that people will focus that you have Ben, ben Shapiro on this podcast, Duncan, but they don't. don't they don't focus that you have Bernie Sanders on? How weird is but it? But they do. They do focus. But it. what I'm saying is, like, people in the left will say you're a monster that you would have Ben Shapiro on, and they completely forget that you gave one of the great. Here's the problem. This is why I hate some of you on the left. Because to a normal person who is unironically well-intentioned, and I'm not talking about Joe, I'm talking about uh, Duncan Trussell here. When you flip out that Joe Rogan gave a gigantic platform of apolitical chuds, some of which who vote, an opportunity to learn about Bernie Sanders in, in, for an hour and 30 minutes in an uninterrupted capacity, some of you stupid literally jump on the liberal bandwagon i know why liberals are the ones who are criticizing ben uh criticizing bernie sanders they're criticizing bernie sanders because fuck bernie sanders bernie sanders is a threat to their power so why the fuck do anarchists and people with hammer and sickles on their twitter descriptions the turn around and freak the, the fuck out when pass. bernie sanders goes on the joe rogan podcast that's why when when shit like that happens i'm like fuck off when people were like, I can't believe this is happening. I was like, no, this is extremely good. Shut your mouth. Because the secondary consequence of that, that you don't even think about, is well-intentioned people who are privileged and rather apolitical because politics comes across as like um, shitty and, and conflicting and, and uh, constant struggle for them. For people like Duncan Trussell, you are now a leftist voice that is just insane. Like, that you just come across as like an insane person. All sorts of aspects of society that I don't agree with, that smart people disagree with. Right. I don't know if they're right. I don't know if I'm right. I don't know. I would like to talk forever to people that are vegans. Like, mm -hmm. well, my, my friend John Joseph, he's a, the singer of the, the, the Cro-Mags. He's, a, he's a, been a vegan forever. And he's like a super f***ing strong guy. Like, uh, mentally, physically, just triathlons. I want people to think different than me. Right. I want them to. Yeah, bitch. The difference is he's a f***ing vegan. If anything, he's more morally righteous than you and I ever can be. He's not harming anyone with his rhetoric. I just don't understand how people can't get this. Like, the only way you would not be able to comprehend that Ben Shapiro's ideas aren't just oh, radical, but they're also man, harmful, son. is if you were, I guess, like, if you put yourself in the shoes of someone who would be marginalized by the normalization of Ben Shapiro's style rhetoric. And by that, I mean, like, be black or brown or really f poor 
for a day. We should postpone the election and try to find a better way to do this. No, do the fucking election. Get Biden in there. Get a non-lunatic in there. What we need is um, romantic tension oh, between a 24-year-old, like super, <laughs> super liberal, super attractive woman yeah. and like a 32-year-old Navy SEAL <laughs> who's also married and no one cheats on anybody, but they have the sexual tension and they keep it together. <laughs> And they work their way through veganism. What the fuck? And. <laughs> what are you even talking about? I'm trying. Joe Rogan is literally the stupidest, dumbest motherfucker on the planet, dude. He really is. I'm sorry. Like, I know he's high as giraffe pussy right now, but like, it really, it really reveals the way he operates. It really does. It's just, his brain just works in. The most unironically brain dead, middle of the road liberal way possible. Come on, you know, just like sexual tension between a female liberal and a and a male Navy SEAL conservative will like really solve all of our problems. Okay, this is the point where I tell you why this person was profoundly influential in my life. Something that I don't know if I've ever revealed to any of you before. Are you guys ready for this? When I was a young lad, a young boy coming into Los Angeles and doing shit work for TYT. I was a gigantic, ginormous fan of Joe Rogan. And the reason why His I was a ginormous fan of Joe Rogan before he turned heel and like started fucking highlighting Milo Yiannopoulos and all these other people. The reason why I loved him is because I saw someone who was profoundly successful and decided to take all that wealth and the social capital that he had accrued over his career and do something on his own. Do something on his own on a unique medium where he still maintained that social capital and actually use it to his advantage and did whatever the fuck he wanted. For me, it was it, it was not that he had so much money. It's that he didn't care. Like he used the original amount of money that he made, you know, in the UFC and uh, through Fear Factor and all this other stuff to create something for himself rather than continue along with the the regular the regular track record that he could have continued with the regular track that is available to him for like people like him in that career he he went off the beaten path and did what he wanted to do which was i want to f have a podcast i want to have my friends over i want to have conversations with them and you know people will watch me because it's fun and it's entertaining and i love that i mean that's that's some way that i wanted to that's something that i always wanted to do i i tailored my career trajectory with that kind of influence hoping one day that, that i could that I could also have a, a community that I've cultivated. People would come and, and listen to and, and watch. And it, I would be financially independent enough that I wasn't constantly living with the fear of, of you know, not being able to survive. So that's why Joe Rogan was profoundly impactful for me. It was hard for me to escape that when I listened to him be a dumb ape.